Okay, welcome, uh, Felicia Gibson, uh, to Autism Spa. It's a real pleasure to have you here. Uh, as you know, I love to seek out uh, experts from around the world that speak to new autism technologies and software and and trends that can help our kids. So when I found you uh, online, I thought I got to talk to her. I want to learn uh, what you're doing uh, with PAGS. Uh, the PAGSprofile.com is the website. It's a software uh, designed to help special needs kids, kids with autism. I think I read from five to 25, you know, it was a big range. Uh, but uh, I am interested in what unique uh, programs you're offering and how families can take advantage of that. Uh, offering. But before we get to that, tell us about yourself, your background. How did you get into this field? Uh, you know, why, why did you choose this field to get into? Well, thank you so much for uh, having me here. Um, I'm really honored <laughs> and listening to Dr. George's uh, uh, previous uh, intervention. I said, oh my God, I hope I, <laughs> I'm living up to expectations. <laughs> Okay, so my background is um, uh, in education. I come from an education field. I work in the mainstream school 10 years and 17 years in uh, special educational needs and mostly with uh, students that will have uh, or be on autistic spectrum from severe, mild to high functioning uh, autism. Uh, I have to say that I am absolutely deeply moved the way how they learn and, and perceive the world. So that my uh, working intensively nine years in an independent school, um, I got like, uh, like the, Dr. Joss was uh, mentioning, you have to get into their world to understand how it actually they feel and and uh, to get to know them. And once you get to know them, once you get into their world and do things alongside them, it takes a lot of effort indeed and is um, uh, is quite a strenuous work for the parents. Right. Um, it is really rewarding when you get them. So working in a boarding school, I work with students that actually have spent 52 weeks in there. Uh, we got to get to know them really, really well. So when we had the annual reviews, we had the parents want a disciplinary meeting. And I said, Mason, I really want to know more. So I went to the university at Birmingham. And I did my master's in uh, autism, children. And from there, I said, okay, can, how can I take this and apply this in practice and make it even better? You know, I always looking at optimizing the outcomes for uh, such children because they have so many talents and they have so much potential that is actually uh, lost. Uh, and to unlock that and to make it, uh, to make the, 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 all of the whole world aware that is actually a lot of resources that we can tap in. Oops. So um, um, that's my journey, I would say, to get into the research. Uh, for my thesis, for instance, I, I studied, the, um, evaluated the information technology effectiveness in teaching uh, students on our learners on autistic spectrum um, with severe learning difficulties. So having a very restricted language, one or two words and mm -hmm. uh, expanding that. So uh, going further into expressive communication using the approach of information technology. And I came across with, you will not believe it that we have in the education because everything that I do is based on the education. Um, I had to look at 260 applications, uh, communication app, and to actually to find out which one is the best way, which one is the best to, um, to work with, with my students in the classroom. So uh, I then I realized how challenging must be for anyone. I mean, myself as an educator, but also for the parents, who would I know uh, and to recommend the best, you know, the best app is this or that. So you have I also have to look at and research it and study. So I did my dissertation evaluating uh, uh, one of the applications and came considerably uh, to understand that actually the children can start with a basic vocabulary of 45 words, I said, or 55 words, but then they can gradually increase that. So you can go through um, building from one to two and, and, and getting that in a functional setting. And I back up what uh, uh, Dr. Joss uh, said, that is actually the children will understand if and will use and will learn if everything you present to them has a meaning and is functional. If I 
learn how to go to a shop and use my iPad because this is what my students are doing, using the iPad to actually, I want to buy crisps. You know, that's fabulous because that child is nonverbal and managed with an application to have a voice and to express what he wants to do in the community, in a society that is accepting that, you know. I found that really, really uh, revolutionary. So then I looked at how do we measure the progress? Because us as an educator, we have a massive challenge to demonstrate progress, to measure this progress, to say, okay, my child is making some progress, but can I quantify this progress qualitatively, quantitatively? Um, again, um, what is actually meaningful for them to learn. So I looked at our educational system and what was in place at that time. So I don't know if you uh, are aware what, what was before Rochford report, we had the um, uh, P levels and uh, every one of the students who will be the, from severe to mild, moderate to high functioning, they will be looking at and other frames of work developed by the um, autism framework. So we look at what we, how we quantify this progress and what is meaningful for, for the children. Then we look together with a group of professionals, we look at the cognitive development theories, the child development theories, and we look at uh, Piaget and Vygotsky that is still studied at university and is part of the teaching training. And I said, you know, that all this science has been there for decades, but never realize it into a digital format. So what we did, we combined our expertise as practitioners, because we are all practitioners and I'm still uh, working with the uh, currently supporting families and, and uh, professionals. And I said, okay, what can we do better? So we, and we designed a developmental module with developmental approach. So um, I think Dr. Joss was, talking about positive development. And we talk about developmental approach in terms of understanding how the child is actually building and um, to understand their strengths. Our model is very positive. So what we came across in, uh, in, in the school was all the time positive intervention and how with this positively actually um, build more. So we look at um, um, building this uh, module, which is based on the four simple steps. Pags, this is what I'm talking about. So uh, this is how Pags was born and is a creation of a group of people, so which I initiated, but then I came across with uh, clinical psychologists, speech and language therapists, uh, occupational therapists, uh, um, uh, educational consultant working with assessment. So incorporated all this expertise and okay, let's build the module that is actually unique and revolutionary and is teaching functional skills rather than tasks. So it's very easy, for instance, to teach a child uh, um, something that doesn't have any foundation. If I teach the child, uh, for instance, uh, the number value up to 10 or to read some sentences that, that actually there are no foundation and there are just out of the place, then I, that leaves a little bit confused uh, the, the teacher in the classroom. Okay, but he knows how to count up to 10, why he can move forward. So you really have to understand how the brain learns. So we looking at, um, uh, uh, as I said, the cognitive development theory. So we come with, with a questionnaire. The questionnaire is looking at four area that is actually a 360 uh, overview of the child. So it's looking holistically of what the child will behave across three environments, which will be school, home, and community. So not teaching something in isolation. And then uh, we look at, okay, um, this questionnaire can be geared and can be answered as a multidisciplinary uh, in the, uh, combination with the parents and professionals or by the teacher themselves. And after you complete the questionnaire, the questionnaire will be transferred into a profile. So you actually see the brain how it's mapped and you see the strengths. And I, for me, then I start working with closely with uh, clinical psychologists and educational psychologists. And then I said, this is absolutely innovative. Hmm. And why? Because it's actually you look of where the child is and where the strengths are, and you can point the developmental gaps. But you're not saying that these are the weaknesses. You say this, we should offer the child opportunities for learning. 
Mm-hmm. That should be talking about it. That is not a weakness. That is an area that I need to put effort to develop. And for uh, um, the questionnaire, so uh, packs in four simple steps is a questionnaire. The questionnaire, the algorithm, because it's, uh, <laughs> it's a long journey, but uh, we started sure. with the paper and now we have a software. The algorithm will generate the targets that how we actually have to, uh, which areas we have to target. And then in the third step, we'll also provide the um, clinically validated exercises, best um, teaching practices, things that are suggestions and we are not locking people in one system because actually you can add your own strategy. You can say, okay, this, I found it this very useful, but here we go, I have something. So then that will be also reviewed and in, the, in, in time, um, perhaps added to the, to the rest of the strategy. First, we started with what is really, really important. So not only that by asking the questionnaire, you have a profile, then you identify what is missing and how to work forwards. Then we also provide those exercises and resources. And when I mentioned at the beginning that I had to look at two, 260 communication apps. So we look now how to integrate the best apps. I first as we now are in the process of talking to a superb application scientifically validated by uh, University of Luxembourg, developed with a team of experts from the University of Luxembourg, developing early mathematical skills for four to eight uh, students that uh, uh, you don't need to use any language because it's all about the visual uh, and in using those early mathematical skills that we then feed um, towards. And um, making a selection of the best apps to be included for the parents and professionals not to spend too much time of searching and having this bank of resources. Because I have to say that in, in my job, I spend hours and hours trying to find the best things to, and the best resources for our students. Believe it or not, I have in my class, I taught about um, nine to 12. So I had 12 students in my class, classroom. In the class, I had uh, some of them, they were on uh, profound multiple learning difficulties. So you had to, to do your lesson very well. And then you had in the middle, mild and difficult, <laughs> mild right. and moderate. Right. And then also you have another uh, uh, three students, they were high functioning in the autistic spectrum. It is ginormous work. I don't right. understand how the teachers are feeling. And then right. you have to answer to, to the parents and to, 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 to the school of how do you actually make progress and how do you measure progress. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, I mean, it sounds very familiar to what I see as I talk with experts around the world, really. They, you all have something in common. You have identified a need in the community for something more than what the kids are getting from the standard therapies available, whether it's ABA or something else. And then you're focusing on the strengths or the abilities or the opportunities of uh, the kids more than their weaknesses, then you're applying uh, a, a foundation uh, or a context uh, or point of reference for them to help them make those connections. Whereas repetitive one, two, three, four, five, you know, doesn't help them understand a lot of those things. And I can just see in, in the back of my head some ABA uh, therapists arguing with me on the <laughs> saying, Oh no, no ABA is, I mean, I mean, they believe in ABA a hundred percent and it, they feel like it covers everything. Um, but all I can tell you, you know, as a customer, as a parent, uh, and my son is in that system. Uh, I don't feel he's getting everything, uh, that, that's possible for him, uh, all those opportunities that you mentioned. He's getting kind of the structure, the black and white, the, 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 the check the box, the, all those things you mentioned about monitoring and, you know, but uh, he's not, I can't see any forward progress with that uh, style of approach, you know. So most parents like me and others, I think they always want to try something different. And I tell you, the toughest thing as a parent is not knowing which one is, is the one for your kid. It's like trying to tell your kid, you got to learn an instrument, but you don't know which one they have the propensity 
to be great at? Are they a great violinist or a pianist? And which one do I encourage? Do I encourage violin or piano? And how would I know if I'd encouraged piano, maybe he would have gone to be a great pianist, but instead I encouraged violin and now he's a mediocre violinist, right? So it, everything about learning and foundations sounds to me as a parent, as a, as a, I'm listening to you, sounds like uh, more parental involvement and more parental learning is a part of this process. And I see that in common with a lot of therapies. There's a lot of therapies that are out there where the parents play almost just as important a part as the child. Uh, it, and I know ABA therapies encourage that, but it seems like in the new wave of therapies that's out there from uh, a lot of the folks that I've interviewed on this podcast, uh, the, the idea is helping parents recognize their own child's potential rather than accepting that kind of putting them in a box with their limitations and with their therapies is all they're ever going to be, especially if they're severe uh, or moderate. You know, mild autism, a little bit of social issues, you know, not to make you know light of that, I always say, you know what, I would give my right arm for having some light social issues. You know, when your child is severe, he's, he's nonverbal, he needs 24-7 care, he has severe meltdowns, like a lot of families deal with. Sometimes they have one, two, three, four kids on the spectrum, all having significant problems. So that's a lot to deal with. I mean, it seems like parents, I, the reason I'm calling this podcast Autism Spa is that I've always believed fundamentally, parents need just as much therapy as the kids do. Absolutely. <laughs> to help them create the, the safe and uh, conducive and peaceful environment mm -hmm. that these kids need so they don't have to worry about their home life and the stresses they see at home. They can focus on those positive opportunities instead of just managing the day-to-day -day stress, right? So uh, tell us how would uh, someone get to uh, your services how would is it only limited to being in england or is it internet is it all remotely done how would somebody interact with your services um it's very easy that so they can come they can contact us via the website so we have a website right uh, we have a book like for instance a booking form so they can book an, a free you know, consultation with us um, it's, I would be delighted to meet as many parents as possible. We have um, a growing uh, body of uh, professionals it's in the UK. Uh, we also uh, am actually currently in Belgium. So we, we open a new company here and then are working and developing the system here. And here uh, we have uh, uh, some contacts and uh, professionals that are working with us uh, in uh, Kenya, uh, in Nairobi. Um, in West Africa, we will be starting soon in Nigeria, just uh, two superb schools that will be enrolling and then also in Malta. So we have professionals. We also have a portal where the professionals can subscribe and can be part of those services. And why? Because the parents are actually, as you uh, ex just explained, uh, they are having a wealth of knowledge about the child, but sometimes they are so confused about so many targets. The yeah. speech language therapist works with the target, the occupational therapist with the target. Yes. So what we created, we created a system that all this information is in one place. Okay. I really, my heart really goes out to parents when I hear them, yes, but I told that story already couple of times so right. you have to go to that my son is doing this and he's doing that so we came across with a very uh with a family that as you said they needed the same the just as much as support as as their child yeah. uh, uh, and this is uh, they came across during covid during the lockdown the child uh, was actually at home so they they were shocked to see how much support a 16 years old will need to complete the task that was sent by the school yeah. so like, a minute is this is a huge discrepancy in between what he can do and what the school is thinking that he can do right. so they spent a lot of time helping him to complete those tasks that were sent by the school 
for him not to lose his self-esteem. And then, you know, that also had an impact on the OCD, on the mental health and increasing the, actually uh, magnify, amplifying the OCD that uh, he went to uh, washing the hands very, and brushing the teeth after breathing. Right. So right. Thing, you would see that the anxiety was propelling inside because right. lockdown was a period that showed to the parents and showed to how uh, how much how many hats a parent has to wear yeah. things and this is actually uh, also showed the inequality in uh, terms of supporting those uh, and offering those services so hence the digital era i think should be more embraced it should be a, a kind of a formal hybrid that people have the potential to meet the therapist or have the opportunity to do this online. So our platform um, is, is enabling all this communication to be in one place, I can say end-to-end -end solution. And in, by incorporating, by bringing all those professionals on board, is you have that um, um, team around the child, you have that circle of support as uh, uh, Dr. Jules met, which is extremely important when we talk about people who, and learners that will have a, um, autism and perhaps an other comorbid condition that you are not aware. Right. So the good impact is that um, being a system that is on online, so can be accessed from anywhere in the world, is uh, validated. Uh, uh, the questionnaire has been uh, independent, had an independent research from the Institute of Education, uh, University of College of London. A dissertation was uh, conducted and validated. So it's everything uh, based on on the um, um, on the research right. and was cross-examined. Uh, we are still waiting, so we were cross-examined with three standardized uh, assessments most used in the field of education in um, psychology, which is the strengths and difficulty questionnaire, communication checklist by the RT Bishop, and um, a social response in this scale. We have four modules, that I, as I explained, and you just mentioned social Please. skills. Yeah. We look at communication, we look at the social interaction, we look at the cognition and learning, and self-regulation. Self-regulation meaning how am I dealing with change? How am I dealing with transition? Uh, am I managing? I, do I have any management? Or for, do I set myself any goals? Any 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 um, uh, any expect any expectations as well? So how do I manage that? So we start from five to twenty-five, and we're looking from the eighteen to twenty-five for children, for adults, for instance, that are not children anymore. Mm -hmm. Have a uh, IQ lower than seventy, which mm. you would not believe it. But the oldest on the platform is actually uh, thirty-six. We never designed and never thought that we would be looking at uh, that long. That uh, you know, but um, after he completed the questionnaire via one of the professionals that is working with uh, with Pax, he was saying actually, Felicia, the platform got it. 75 percent <laughs> he recognized himself and another good thing is because we work with a lot of clinicians and uh, education psychologists a lot of um, parents are reaching out to professionals so they go to professionals and said please help me i need help right professional has to embark into a lot of batteries of tests to screen the child and sometimes in the uk for instance is such a long waiting list it's, it's, it's incredible. You What's the waiting list for? Two years to have a, an assessment, to have a health assessment or neurodevelopmental assessment. It's two crazy. years for, wow. Yeah, so in some areas of the country, not in everyone. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Else, it's two years. So we are a neurodevelopmental assessment. So we now the world has to know about us and how to use it because it's looking beautifully of what the child can do and right. also just all these interventions of how to help the child. Right, right. And very importantly, I will really want to point this out, is that it's helping the practitioner because it's the practitioner who has to make a judgment. Right. The practitioner to distinguish in between is this child having a global developmental delay? For instance, uh, we may start talking not at the age of two, but at the age of four, but we'll still follow the same uh, um, 
neurotypical yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's yeah. But what the other side would be, so how do you identify the neurodevelopmental disorder? So we, what we see through the other profile is actually there are some specific area that are the skills are not developed. And it's right. very easy to be misled by working on the assumption, yes, but the child is 16, there should be no man now. But right. actually, there are some fundament, like you have a building and you have no foundation. If yeah. you don't have that foundation, that building, you even you put a roof, it still is going to collapse. So we have to look to go back to, to the beginning and to look at the foundation, to look right. where all those skills should have been developed and there was no opportunity to be developed or by the foundation or by the schooling experience or by other contributing factors, comorbid conditions undetected. And start from there and build on this. All right. Fantastic evidence from one of the speech and language therapists that is working with the platform. She screened versus a child uh, with a test of pragmatic language and the child was scoring only five. And then she worked intensively on uh, perspective taking, uh, repairing all relationship breakdown situation, recognition of non-verbal communication, communicative intent, negotiation. Right. And working on those four areas and actually the child moved from five to 50 when he was reassessed in six months time which means that now the difficulties were identified by packs and that the child was having problem with sequencing perspective taking difficulty in uh, interpreting intent uh, recognition of uh, body language and uh, facial expression that we know that this is one of the triads uh, understanding negatives in a complex uh, sentence understanding no literal uh, right. which like sarcasm humor requesting qualification qualification or asking for help so i see these are such an imp important steps important skills to develop because they could further down the line they could lead to for instance employment yeah right <laughs> right yeah no those are i mean th there's no i mean when you think about what you have to supplement in somebody's life if they are developmentally delayed from eating to walk, I mean, uh, to safety, to like mentioned work and social, I mean, it, you're trying to supplement a human being and that's not easy, you know? Uh, so uh, Felicia, we're, we're almost out of time. I did want to say thank you for spending some time with me. Uh, I, I've learned a lot. Uh, I'm going to have links to your website on our uh, post, obviously, uh, and under our podcast. Um, if you have uh, further, uh, your research continues on, you're welcome to write for our blog, or I'm happy to share any research that you've done for our blog as well on the same website. But uh, this has been amazing. I think I learned a lot. Uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful what you're doing for our kids. You know, as a parent, if nothing else, I'm just grateful that, that I see all this energy and passion and professionalism applied towards bettering the lives of kids on the autism spectrum. Um, any final thoughts, Felicia, before we break off? Um, well, it is, it's been a pleasure to share my experience. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Um, I would say that uh, there is not one solution that fits all, not one size. So therefore, look outside the box. And if there is only ABA therapy, that should be something else. Uh, look at uh, other strategies and look at the neurodevelopmental uh, assessments that, that actually can help enormously the child. And then... Uh, um, and let's uh, let um, uh, have um, a follow up, perhaps, because we are in the process of um, publishing our paper about methodology in um, in Wiley. So that I'm really looking forward. So once we have a link, we will be sending to you. And if there is an opportunity to write a blog, we would be happy to do that. Wonderful. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity on the behalf of Bank's team. I would like to thank you. And um, I'm looking forward to meet other parents. And if anyone would like to reach out to us, um, we, we have a fantastic offer. So please reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. Thank you so much for your time. We will be in touch. Thank you. Thank you.